You know, I think my least favorite guitar metaphor is seeing the fretboard as a road map that you memorize. Because I don't know any roads. I could live in a town for a decade and still not really know the names or the ways that roads work. Uh, because I always get lost in every city that I've ever lived in. Because I only really need to know how to get to like the coffee shop, the, the, the Manny Petty place, home decor. All my other bases are covered. So I think learning the fretboard as like a road map of scales is stupid because it's not practical. We're gonna talk about context today, okay? And we're gonna start by doing something in the key of F, F major seven. And then we're gonna do just a bunch of like real quick, real quick shortcuts that'll get you around town. Cause that's the whole point. The whole point is to find out where you're going and to get there. It's not about memorizing the grids of roads and all the names and the exits because you're not gonna use them. You're just gonna wanna go where you're gonna wanna go. So we're gonna start off in the key of F, all right? Now we have a root note, first fret on the E string. I'm gonna take this chord, F major seven. Right, so I've got the first fret on the E string, the second fret on the D string, the second fret on the G string, and the first fret on the B string. Okay? Now, where we're gonna go is all gonna start from here, which is why we're gonna be able to move this into other keys very easily, right? But, the first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, where other notes in this key are gonna come from, and it's a really easy thing that you could do, right? So, wherever, whatever key you're in, go two frets higher, and we're gonna, we're gonna learn a five note scale that is not the pentatonic scale, it's a pentatonic scale. It's basically the entire third fret and the entire fifth fret, okay? So if we were to play them one note at a time, one string at a time, it would look like this. Three, five, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, five, all right? Now, that's so easy to remember. You don't really have to even remember a scale shape, you just have a root note, you have a chord, and then now, again, you might hear that and be like, you've managed to pick all the notes in a key that somehow sound worse than just playing the pentatonic scale. Because it's not about playing them in order, it's about playing them contextually. There's a lot that you can do with all these notes, but it's just good to know that these are always going to be places that you can go off of a root note. This works in absolutely any key. You can play it in the people's key, the key of G. And then you just go... And then you just go two frets higher, and then all of those are gonna be there. By the way, you may have noticed that I'm not sitting on the couch. I have a little bit more freedom because I'm using a Phoenix Pro wireless guitar system. You don't have to use them just for live stuff. You can just plug it in and put it in your amp, which I have over on the other side of the room, which now I realize filming this video, it doesn't sound as good from where I'm sitting. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but the Phoenix Pro wireless set is actually awesome, uh, super inexpensive. There's an affiliate link in the description. Like I said, I've used this stuff for live gigs, so it's good, and it's really reasonably priced. So thank you to Phoenix Pro for sponsoring this video. Affiliate link is in the description, all right? Now, what can you do with this to make it sound more musical, all right? I always think when I think of musicality as chords, you can think of them as coming from scales, coming from scale degrees and stuff like that. But contextually, it always works as chords. So if we were to make chords from just these notes, you could really do, I, th I think the most obvious one would be a minor seven chord, all right? So the two chord in the key of F, F, G, is right there. It's really just the third fret. I'm skipping the A string. So I've got the third fret on the E string, then I've got the third fret on the D, G, and B. And then the next chord is A minor seven. The exact same thing on the fifth fret, okay? So we have three chords that really have just branched off from just this one spot, all right? And now we can start kind of going back and forth, inflecting the chords, stuff like that. One thing I really like the sound of is maybe taking that two chord, that third fret, and then maybe just kind of adding that high A to a G chord like that, right? So we have like F. And then really anything you want to do to add to an F chord, you don't even have to think of them as different chords. You can think of this as just being our one chord and then doing 
using something like that, which is something that I, I personally use a lot in my own playing. Now, I want to talk more about this. <laughs> Because I think the real musicality comes in adding just a few more notes, right? Because then you get a, a bigger part of the a picture. Now, now you can kind of add maybe the mall, right? You can get your fresh Lululemon swag, aside from just, you know, going to uh, the home decor spot, right? So if we continue on from this spot, you notice my ring finger and my pinky in this chord voice are on the second fret of the D and the G string. Now, if we add these two notes, the third fret of the D and G string, and then the fifth fret of the D and G string, we can kind of turn this into a really easy thing that you can rip off like a lot of quick notes. Anytime you can kind of do that double hammer on like two to three, three to five, then you're really cooking with fire. You know what I'm saying? So you start here. And all that's coming just from really one chord and then learning the frets right afterwards, okay? Now we can start the next thing that we're doing by just playing the chord and then maybe going into maybe little riffs or something from just this spot, something that would sound like this. So you're, I'm kind of going back and forth between playing them as maybe like little double hammer-ons and then maybe even double stops where I kind of play them together, all right? That's the great thing about the first three chords in any key is especially playing them as seven chords, like minor seven chords and major seven chords. There's so much for doing double stops and stuff like that, right? So taking the exact same concepts that we already talked about, continuing on with the freedom of being completely wireless as I am on this spinny, spinny chair, which is, how amazing is that? Thank you, Phoenix Pro. We can kind of add a couple notes to the next part of the scale, right? If I were to play the F major scale, three notes per string, starting in the first fret, it would look like this. One, three, five, one, three, five, two, three, five, two, three, five, three, five, six, three, five, six. So, by thinking of this pattern and memorizing that, you know, full major scale three notes per string pattern, that seems more like a roadmap. But contextually, around these chords, and then now adding five, six, five, six, this would be an E and an F, and an A and a B flat, and then adding the notes here, right there, sounds familiar, right? Again, we're adding that to just the third fret and the fifth fret. So maybe I can kind of navigate through into doing little licks right there. Like right there, it's just F major seven. I'm gonna start on the second fret of the D string and then slide and then go outside of that third fret, fifth fret box. And it's always gonna resolve around that F major seven chord, okay? So before we maybe even venture further out than that, the, la the last thing I do wanna do in this position is go one note higher on the highest string. So the highest note that we've played so far, you know, we've, got, we've done this. Ending on a B flat really doesn't sound great in the key of F. That's why I go another whole step higher to a C, okay? So think of contextually, we can make a C major chord like this, or just taking a C and then ending back on F because again, C is a note in the chord of F. This is very important, F, A, C, along with the E in this particular voicing, right? So now let's go into a totally different spot. Let's go a little higher into the neck, do something in the key of A, which I always think is like one of the prettiest keys, right? 
And then let's take everything that we just learned, but now maybe go a little bit both ways, forward and backward through the neck in this position. All right, so we've got A major, everything we just talked about. One of the reasons I love this major seven chord voicing is because it lines your ring finger and your pinky up exactly where you want to be to really utilize all the stuff that we've talked about, right? I think it's really just a good way to kind of set off in your mind's eye. Oh, here's something. That you can kind of jump off from, right? You already have your fingers set up in that position to double stop through, especially going now what I'm thinking of as the seventh fret and the ninth fret to do that little cheat thing there. Well, I can either do the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, and then kind of go back and forth between them. And then, you know, just kind of explore that. And then here is where you can actually do another, another cool thing, which we can maybe go backwards three frets from the root note, what occurs three frets behind the root note. Everybody's favorite relative minor or minor pentatonic, however you want to play it. So that's what the cool thing about the key of A is, is we can kind of continue further down the neck. Or we can go backwards. And then again, if you start using pentatonic licks, something like maybe like that. This is just like an A major triad that maybe you've, I'm sure you've heard it before. I don't know if you've ever played it like this, but starting on the major third of a chord, which a major bar chord would be your middle finger, sixth fret on the G string. When we kind of do that little thing right there to make that A major chord. Well, what you do here this is really the start of that little shape that we talked about earlier, right? So it's really about making these connections because again, that's how you navigate through cities. You know that like you turn it like a monument, eh? how most people, how non-machines do it. It's always weird when people like know the roads a little too well. Don't trust those people. And navigate by monuments. The same is true for guitar. So you get into that minor third. And that, none of that is really coming from a scale, even though it is coming from a scale, but I'm not thinking about the scale. I'm thinking about starting. There, maybe I want to back it up. two chord, the three chord. And again, I'm really just thinking of uh, two frets, one full step higher than your root note. Eh? And thinking of those as two complete frets where you can make minor seven chords, you can double stop through them. And then adding that half step on the top of it a great way to really start to remember how to do things right because again like i said if i if i'm not driving the car if i'm a passenger in the car i'll have no recollection of how i get wherever i am but if you're driving the car then you start to notice those monuments right this really started off as a joke metaphor but the more i get into it the more i kind of like it <laughs> And just double stop around and just have a good old time. Just like having a good old time being completely free from wires. Thank you, Phoenix Pro. They also make uh, wireless microphones. I've done like a bunch of videos with you. I usually do like one every month. They got really reasonably priced uh, handheld microphone transmitters. I'll link you to, to their website in the description because if you're looking for any kind of live sound, it's the way to go to get it done really inexpensively. And like I said, even just having something around in the studio just to like wirelessly go... Uh, transmitter receiver into an amp. Really just to cleans stuff up around here. I have so many cables all over this room. It brings me endless amounts of anxiety. So thank you to Phoenix Pro for not only sponsoring this, but helping me with my mental, <laughs> my mental health as well. 
extra bonus. So if you've taken one thing from this lesson, it's really just root note, whatever key you're in, two frets higher. All those notes are fair game with whatever you want to do, whether you're playing a lead thing, whether you're just tacking double stops onto a chord, or you maybe you want to do something, you know, a little more robust. And then think of those monuments as far as like getting that major third into it. Because that sounds that sounds impressive, right? When you do that double hammer on in the middle of that shape. it out right so again thanks for checking it out like i said hit that affiliate link in the description get yourself some wireless gear if you have any questions or comments hit me up in the comment section instagram twitter or the website i'll talk to you all soon thanks a lot